Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is a stunning day here in Wellington, New Zealand, and you can hear the sounds of the birds. The sounds of the birds are like one of the most amazing sounds here in New Zealand, really anywhere that you are in New Zealand. It's such a great sound. So today we're gonna to have a great topic. We are going to talk about the 10 things that you should not do because they are going to annoy New Zealander. So you're not going to want to do these things. These are going to be really helpful tips whether you're moving here or traveling here. And you are definitely not going to want to miss number 10. So stay tuned. Here we go. Okay, so we're recording inside. I just want to make sure that everybody could hear everything and the sun was in my face and all these reasons. So here we are. We're going to talk about our topic today inside, but if you don't know us, we are a family of six that have moved to New Zealand from the U.S. and have been here for seven years and kind of share our journey and everything that we're learning. And so all of this is really just our experience and our perspective. So if you don't know, check out KiwiAmericans.com if you're living or moving or traveling here. I have lots of resources available for you there. So here we go. Number one. Number one thing that you should not do when you are in New Zealand is talk about how great you are. Don't talk about your job. Don't talk about what you've accomplished. Don't talk about that. They don't talk about the hair. They, nobody cares. Everybody likes to be the same. Nobody likes self-promotion. I've just saved you a lot of heartache, okay? So don't come here. In the, in the U.S., it's like the second thing that people ask is like, what do you do for a living? They don't ask you that here. You have no idea. I've had no idea what my friends do for a living, and I've been friends with them for years. <laughs> okay, because it's just not a thing in here. They don't value hierarchy. They value kind of everybody being treated equally. Number two, do not sit on countertops or benches or anywhere where food is served. This is a very disrespectful thing to the Maori culture here in New Zealand. And so you're not going to want to do that. And so that is like a hot tip. Don't sit on a table or a surface that people normally eat because it's disrespectful. Number three, don't enter a home here in New Zealand and leave your shoes on. Always offer to take your shoes off. It's a very much different cultures representative here. And in general, I have just gotten the feeling that you should just always offer that because you don't know. And sometimes they won't always confront you and say, please take your shoes off uh, because there's a lot of a passive aggressive going on, but they won't like that. So just offer to take your shoes off and they, and then your host can decide whether uh, they care or not, but just don't walk in and just leave your shoes on. Number four, no littering. Now, if you're in New Zealand and you're watching this video and you're like, why is she talking about these things? Why would people do these things? Because you have to understand that I understand the culture that I came from and I understand what's different. And these are what would be helpful for other people coming here to know, especially Americans. So no littering, no dropping trash, rubbish anywhere, especially when you're like hiking or tramping out into the wilderness and coming back, whatever you take in, you're expected to take out. Don't expect there to be rubbish bins or trash bins, just pack in, pack up. Okay. And don't, and just, just be aware of that. Just be aware of everything that maybe falls out of your pocket. Even if it's unintentionally pick it up, just trust me on that. Number five, don't skip Kmart. You may be surprised that in New Zealand, Kmart is an actually good store <laughs> compared to what it is in the U S it's kind of a joke. Nobody really goes there, but Kmart actual store, at least, you know, when I left the U S five years ago. So Maybe it's kind of been rebirthed in the U.S., so comment below if it has, but as far as I know, it hasn't. And it is a quality store here uh, in New Zealand, similar to Target in the U.S. And so you're not going to want to miss Kmart. Don't just drive by. It's actually a decent store. Number six, don't say to a New Zealander, oh, the New Zealand and Aussie accent is the same. Now, it's a friendly rivalry between the two countries, but yet rivalry. Okay, so a lot of people think, oh, the accents are the same, they talk the same. They don't. They don't. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on something I've been working on. So this idea kind of came in my head about a year ago, and I have been intently working on it for about three months now, and I finally finished it. So what I have created is a free resource. This is something that I feel passionate about, that I feel needs to be out into the world, and so this is why I created it. And it ended up taking a really long time. It ended up being like, 18 pages long, <laughs> but let me tell you about this resource. So one of the things that I have heard uh, for the, like the last 15 years or so, are so many women going back into the workplace and thinking they're feeling out of touch, feeling that they don't have the skills and they tend to take jobs that they're like way below what they maybe were doing before they had kids. And I was like, I've had enough of this. 
That's ridiculous because thinking that like raising your family and the skills that you develop there isn't transferable into the workplace because it 100% is. And so what I wanted to do is create a resource that helps women communicate the skills that they gained while raising their family to their CV, resume, interview, cover letter, whatever, and how to translate that into actual job skills that companies are hiring for. So what I've done is I've gone through and researched the top 10 skills that organizations are hiring for right now and how your how to write your mom skills onto your resume your cv or just in an interview or just to kind of look at your skills differently and to say hey this actually is a skill that would be really helpful in this position in this industry that i'm looking to get into and just a little encouragement around that and just to kind of see things differently so it's a little bit of a paradigm shift a way of looking at things and i was just really passionate about it and wanted to create it and it's free and it's just because i think it needs to be out in the world because when you actually do the research Everybody's telling what telling moms what not to put on their resume. Nobody's telling you what you should. So here's a resource to help you with that to try to change change the conversation around what skills you develop when you are raising your children because they are very marketable in the job market. Number seven, you may have heard this before, but don't drive over the speed limit here in New Zealand. They have cameras everywhere. They'll send you a ticket in the mail and it's quite expensive for even going a couple K over the speed limit. So don't speed when you're here. Like it can be quite a cultural adjustment for Americans because it's quite normal to go 10 miles per hour over or whatever it is. Um, in the city that you're from, but just know here you will be ticketed. It is frowned upon. Don't speed in New Zealand. Number eight, don't cut in line. Don't cut the queue, whether you're standing, whether you're driving, just really not a thing here. Like in the U S depending on where you're from in the big cities, you're going to maneuver around. Mm -mm. You'll see everybody's going to stand in line. It's going to drive you crazy because like we could be maneuvering and moving things a little bit quicker, but no, we're going to stay in line. And if you don't, you get yelled at and sometimes you don't care, but just no, stay in the queue. Number nine, don't go looking for coffee creamer or even eggnog at Christmas here in New Zealand. They don't put like the creamer, fake or real that you normally get in the US in their coffee. They just use milk, almond milk, soy milk, whatever their milk of choice is, but there's no coffee creamers with flavors and that sort of thing. You can get syrups here, but don't go looking for that. I always get that questions from Americans that come and visit here. They're like, where's the creamer? It doesn't, they don't have it. You could add whipping cream. Um, I don't believe they even have half and half here. So just, we're just gonna go with milk. Just gonna go with milk in our coffee in New Zealand. And also as a side note for that, when you go to the coffee shops, don't go and order crazy like coffee drinks like you're used to. Like don't go like, you know, you your typical order at Starbucks. I would like a half decaf, half regular latte, da -da -da, you know, with all your little special things. Don't do that. Just order a flat white, order a latte, order a cappuccino. Just be easy, okay? Cause they'll look at you like, what? Like, why are you being difficult? <laughs> and number 10, the one you've all been waiting for. Now this is a little bit of an insider tip and a generalization and probably isn't true in every single situation, but it has a good rule of thumb. If you're coming to New Zealand to work, probably not a good idea in meetings in front of other people to disagree with your manager. Like this is kind of a cultural thing. I don't know if it's true in every workplace. I haven't worked in every place. My husband hasn't worked in every place, but this has just been our experience. It's not a good idea to just kind of come right out and say, oh, I don't think that's a good idea. I think we should do this. Don't do that. You're going to want to use kinder words. You're going to want to use like, oh, what do you think about this? Or so it's not that you can't get your opinion out there and that it's not valuable. It's just that you have to communicate it differently. You can't come across as um, confrontational. You don't want to come across as confrontational or disagreeable. It's not good because you don't want to burn bridges in this country. There's only 5 million people and I'm telling you, it'll come back to bite you. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Subscribe below, hit the bell if you enjoyed it. And also please share any other thoughts that you have on things that people should know before coming to New Zealand, because that's always great to share and check out KiwiAmericans.com on all my services for helping people live and thrive and travel to New Zealand. See you next week.